welcome you to our Easter service. I'm Pastor Dave Jamerson. We're excited that you're here with us. You know, it's interesting that in the book of Genesis, you start out this story and this narrative where man is in a garden and it's perfect. And God's presence is there and there's fellowship there and that garden then turns into a grave because of Adam and Eve's choice to, to sin and to go their own way. Yet when you come into John chapter 20, which you heard this morning as Manny narrated that, when you come into John chapter 20, you have a tomb, a grave, that then turns into a garden. So there's two graves and two gardens that tell this Easter story. And the big idea is that at the cross and with the resurrection of Jesus, God not only changed the course of the story of mankind, but he changed Mary's story and he, she, he changed Peter's story and he changed those disciples' story and he changes our stories. He changes stories. See, when Mary came to the tomb that day, she was full of regret as she was processing what had happened the last 72 hours. She was coming, questioning, thinking, gosh, if I would have just done this, or if they would have just done this, or if the disciples would have just done this, this wouldn't have happened. We wouldn't have been in this situation. And for many of us, we can live in this place of regret. We can live and go, gosh, if I hadn't made that decision, if I hadn't taken that first drink, if I hadn't responded to that text, if I hadn't gone inside while my kids were swimming to get my phone, if I, had, if I hadn't done this. But here's, here's the incredible thing that the resurrection shows us is that God has the power to change stories. Mary's story went from one of grief and being overwhelmed to being one of incredible hope and joy. And it doesn't matter what our stories are. And see, there were four things in John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18, that we can see that Jesus changed in reverse. The first thing is this, is that God reverses corruption. See, Mary showed up that day thinking she was going to find a decomposing body. She went that day with spices and embalming fluids to, to try to preserve the body of Jesus because she had watched him violently beaten. She had watched him die. She was going expecting corruption. Because here's the thing, is that in Genesis chapter 3, in that first garden, corruption came in. Adam and Eve had a perfect relationship with God. They had perfect fellowship with Him. And all of a sudden, sin entered in, and death entered into the equation. And from the time of the garden of Genesis, all the way up, to Jesus getting out of the tomb, Jesus resurrecting, corruption had its way. And guess what? It has its way, not only in the culture out there, not only in the world what we see, but corruption has its way in you and I. Corruption wins because what happened is, is that man came under a curse in the garden. And Jesus broke that curse. She goes thinking she's going to find corruption. She goes to see, thinking, oh, somebody's stolen the body. Yet what she finds 
is that new life is possible. So not only does God have the ability to reverse corruption in our lives, he has the ability to reverse alienation in our lives. Because if you read in John 20, Mary is there, the disciples have left. She's there by herself. She's thinking she's all alone in her pain and her suffering and her hopelessness. Like many of us think, oh, we have to go through this on our own. We have, we have there's nobody here that, around us. That's Mary. She's there. But, but the thing is, is that the alienation that she was facing is an alienation that's common to all of us. Because again, when you go back to the first garden and Adam and Eve chose to go their own way, what happened is they chose to then go and hide themselves. God came looking for them like he did every day. And he said, Adam, Eve, where are you? They, they were hiding because sin causes us to not go toward God. It causes us to go away from God. They were hiding. They were alienated. They were isolated. It causes us to, for relationships to break down. It causes us to, to, to be lonely and to isolate. This is, this is where Mary was. And she didn't know it. She thought she was by herself in that garden. She all of a sudden encounters who she thinks is a gardener. And she starts to have this conversation with this gardener. And all of a sudden, this gardener speaks something to her. He calls her by her name. He says, Mary. And there was something in the interaction that she recognized who it was, that it was the risen Messiah. It was God in the flesh. There was something. When, when God calls you by name, that He knows you. He knows He created you. He knows everything about you. There was something in that that she... And then he says to her, Jesus says, I have not yet ascended to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Go tell the disciples what you've seen. Mary, you're not alone. I'm here with you. And Mary, I'm not going to have you continue to walk alone. I have a community for you to walk with. I have brothers and sisters for you to walk with. God not only reverses corruption, he reverses the curse of alienation in our lives. Not only does he do that, he reverses condemnation that we carry. See, Jesus said in John 20, I have not yet ascended to my Father and your Father, my God and your God, there's a backstory to this. Because see, in Psalms, it says, Who may ascend to the holy hill? Who may ascend into the presence of God? And it lists all these characteristics of the person that can come into the presence of God and all these character things. But guess what? What was prophesied in the Old Testament, that at one point in time, God would call forth this person, and when he made his call of all the people who had ever died and ever perished in the world, only one came forward and only one was worthy to come out, who could ascend before. See, Jesus was sinless, so he wasn't in shame. He wasn't in condemnation. When he said, I have not yet ascended to my Father, to your Father, to my God, to your God. 
He's saying, hey, listen, I have perfect fellowship with God. And guess what? You don't have to stay in a place of condemnation and shame. Because of what I've done, I can reverse the power of regret. I can reverse the power of shame. I can reverse the power of condemnation in your life. So not only does he reverse corruption, that you and I do not have to live under the power of sin anymore in our lives. Come on, that's good news. Come on, there's a new way. There's a better way. Sin will not have dominion. Galatians chapter 3 said that he became a curse for us so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. Come on. I'm so glad I don't have to live under the power of sin. I'm so glad I don't have to live under the power of corruption that was taking me down paths I didn't want to go. I'm so glad that I don't have to live in alienation and isolation from God and from people. I'm so glad that I don't have to live under condemnation anymore. Come on, many people live their whole lives under condemnation. not good enough if only I'd done this should have made this decision should have married this person should have done this he reverses it and then last he reverses the power of deception in our lives guys it's so interesting what's happening between Genesis 3 and John chapter 20. Remember, two graves, two gardens. Garden to grave, John, grave to garden. It's interesting that in Genesis 3, the woman, Eve, is having a conversation with someone whose name was Lucifer and she lied to him she lied to her in the original garden there was a conversation taking place and it was the wrong voice and it was deception in John chapter 20 a woman once again is in a garden and she's in a conversation and this time, the person is telling her the truth. The truth. This is the truth. Mary, I am the truth. My resurrection is true. My promises are true. Go tell the world. Go tell the disciples the truth. Because here's the other thing that you see happening in that garden is that there were other voices and people again because the guards were told, listen, it's going to be said that he rose from the dead. Here's a sum of money to go and to say that it never happened. In John 20, the resurrection story, we see not only the big story of the world and Adam's sin is reversed, but people's stories are reversed. People's stories are reversed. He reverses stories. He reverses corruption. He reverses alienation, he reverses condemnation, and he reverses deception. That's why we celebrate. Come on. This is incredible good news. No matter where you're at, 
no matter what you've done. Here's the thing. Guys, many of you today, you'll walk out of here and you'll go, that was a nice story. That was a nice service. Do you know when it became real for Mary? When she had a personal encounter with Jesus. Not just a theory, not just a fable. No, a personal encounter. You don't have to walk out of here today carrying corruption. You don't have to walk out of here feeling all alone. You don't have to walk out of here carrying condemnation. And you don't have to walk out of here believing the lie and deception. Because of what Jesus did on the cross and what he did three days later of getting out of the grave, your story can be reversed. But guess what? You have to actually do something with it. I had heard the stories of Jesus from the time I was three, four years old. Wonderful. In June of 1991, it became personal to me. I personally needed a savior. I personally needed redemption. I personally needed forgiveness. I personally needed hope. Guys, what story are you carrying? And what story are you believing? Because only one has the power to truly change your story. I'm going to have our prayer team come down front. Guys, if there's any part of your story that you want to see changed, our worship team is going to come back up. They're going to lead us in one final song. Guys, if there's any part of you, God, you can say today, God, change me. Change my heart. God, take this away. God, put people around me. God, take this fear away. God, this part of my story, redeem it, change it. So as they lead us in worship, stand to our feet. Go ahead and stand to our feet. If there's any part of your story that you want changed, like Mary's story was changed, she left a different person, a different person. Our prayer team will be down here. Right where you are, you can also pray.